Forget what you thought you knew about AI. DeepSeek AI is here and it's shattering records, even beating OpenAI's GPT metrics. And guess what? There's an open source version you can use absolutely free. In this video, we're diving deep into the latest DeepSeek vision model. We'll show you how to build your own local desktop application and unlock incredible OCR text extraction accuracy. If you want the best model for OCR text extraction, you're in the right place. In a previous video, we covered how to harness the power of DeepSeq VL2 for optical character recognition, or OCR, on Windows OS. Today, we'll show you how to do this in Linux. DeepSeq VL2 is a cutting-edge vision language model that goes beyond simple text extraction. It can also understand the meaning of text within images, answer questions about the visual scene, and even infer the overall theme. There is an open source version that you can download and use in your own applications. We'll show you how to install Linux on your Windows system using Windows built-in WSL application. Then we'll demonstrate how to set up your Linux Python environment with Conda, including installing the necessary dependencies and configuring DeepSeq VL2. Then we'll walk through a practical Python model, demonstrating how to extract and interpret text from images. You'll see how this model can understand document layouts and interpret handwritten text while recognizing the information that they contain. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just starting your journey with OCR, this video will equip you with the knowledge to unlock the potential of DeepSeq VL2 on your Linux machine. Stick around till the end where we show how accurate this model is. Okay, let's get started. To install Linux, open PowerShell in admin mode, then type in wsl-install. By default, Ubuntu will be installed. There are several other versions available such as Debian and Fedora. When it is finished installing, set up the WSL instance by typing in this command, wsl-d ubuntu. You can select the password for your new user account here. When the setup is finished, you can verify it was installed by using the uname command. Next, we will install Conda in Linux. Go to the Anaconda repo as shown here and select the file with Linux in the title. We have a 64-bit system, so we select this one. Copy the URL. To download this file, go back to the Linux terminal and type in wget with the URL from the file we selected earlier. When it's finished, clear the screen and execute the file we just downloaded. Use the bash shell command. Accept the license terms by typing yes. You can install in a different directory. The default will be in a new folder named Anaconda under your home directory. Press enter and the installation will begin. Type in yes to get Conda loaded every time you open the terminal. After the installation finishes, you will need to reopen your terminal. To view the shell you are using, you can type in this command. Okay, now we verify Conda is installed by typing in which Python. You should see the Anaconda folder in the path. You can also add this command to your .bash RC file manually if the installation was unable to modify this file. Now we open a Jupyter Notebook by typing in this command. The No Browser parameter is optional. If you leave this off, the terminal will try to find an available browser to use. Otherwise, you will see a URL to manually open the notebook. Copy and paste this into your browser, and this will open a window showing your directory. To open a new notebook, select File, New, and Notebook. For now, we'll use the default Python environment or kernel. Now we run a simple print statement to verify everything is working. To close the Jupyter application, hit Control c This will bring you back to the shell prompt. Now that Conda is installed, we will set up our environment for running the DeepSeq model. First, we create a new Conda environment with this command. Then we need to open or activate the new environment. We have an NVIDIA GPU card on our laptop. This command shows us some details about the card. The card is a GE Force 4060 with 8 GB of graphics memory. This card's good enough for our demo, but if you want to run the model quickly, you might need a better card. Now, we run the command to install several libraries, including Python version 3.10, from the external CondoForge website. This will take a few minutes to solve and install. After this is finished, we will use pip to install the Hugging Face Transformers package from a GitHub repo. This way you can get the most recent version of this package. Eventually, this version will be available in pip, and you won't need to include the git plus part of the command. Now, we install the transformers packages, enabling us to use the model. This will take a few minutes to complete. We need to install the torch set of libraries. Be sure to include the versions as listed, 
They have been tested as compatible with each other. We clone this git repo. Then to install, we need to change the directory to this folder. Here are the files with some details about the model package. Run this pip install command. It will use the requirements.txt file to install more dependencies. Finally, we set up our environment as another kernel option in Jupyter. Now we'll show you the Python code to use the model for OCR text extraction. We need to open Jupyter again. Make sure you are in the root folder first. Open our notebook file. Note the extension for this file is IPYNB. To begin with, we import the Torch library, which is used for training and inference with deep learning models and the tensors from those models. Then we set the device to CUDA GPU if one is available. Otherwise, it is set to CPU. Using the GPU setting will significantly speed up our OCR application, such as when the model processes our messages. Then we load the transformers package so we can directly and easily access pre-trained models from Hugging Face. Finally, we load the packages from the DeepSeq VL2 repo we cloned earlier. These packages simplify the interaction with the DeepSeq models. After running this, we can see that the code was able to detect our GPU. Next, we select the model we will use. Since this is a demo on a basic laptop, we select the smallest size model available. Even so, this model takes up 7 gigs of disk space. Then we use the DeepSeq processor library and select the pre-trained models to be used. This downloads the processor for preparing input to the model, including some token-related JSON files. We need to convert or encode the text and images into tokens or numerical representations that the model can understand. Next, we load the DeepSeq VL2 model to our local hard drive. The files will be stored in a cache directory, so we can reuse the model anytime later on. The time to download depends on your internet speed. In our case, this took around 20 minutes. The next time we run this notebook, this step will only take a few seconds, using the locally cached model. Here's the cache folder, along with the amount of disk space the model took. Then we move our model to the GPU and change the precision. This will speed up the inference we do later on. We are not training this model, but using it for inference only, so we set the mode to eval. We will be using a story receipt in our demo and asking the model to find all the text on the image. The image needs to be converted using the pillow image processing package. Next, we set up the prompt from the model, including roles, content, prompt, and the image to use. Then, we load the processor with the conversation and image and run this on the GPU. Here, we prepare the inputs for the model. Next, we send the inputs to the model and extract out the response using the language generate function from the model. We set the max new tokens to 2048. If this value is too small, your response will be truncated. Too large may slow down the model. We set no grab because we are only running inferences, not training. This will decrease the application's memory usage. Then we need to convert the model output into a human readable format. Finally, we print the output. Looking at the output and comparing it to the receipt, we see 100% accuracy on the normally sized font. However, the model was not able to read the small print, even zoomed in. This text is fuzzy. For accuracy, this model matches or beats any online paid models that are currently available. If you are interested in comparing this model to other popular models, check out our other videos on creating OCR applications with OpenAI, Gemini, Anthropic Cloud, and others. Link to the playlist is in the description below. Okay, that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching our video. As always, questions and comments are welcome. See you next time.